Lauren and Craig are a couple of long-term travelers who have been nomadic for over eight years. They visited over 50 countries since 2008, including Australia, Thailand, Indonesia, Canada, the United States, New Zealand, India, Nepal, and most of Europe. Keeping a tight budget is the key to their travel success, and they spend an average of just $10 each per day. We travel long term because it feels more of an adventure. You begin to kind of like fend for yourself, you have to budget a lot more, work out where your money's coming from and plan your route. To finance their trips, they apply for working holiday visas that allow them to work while they travel. They usually pick up waitressing and bartending work at local restaurants and pubs, but they've also taken jobs at a cheese factory, a sweet potato farm, and a beach resort. So usually we work six months, and then we travel for about 12 months. So we work in Western countries like Australia, England, Canada, and then we go to Southeast Asia or Central South America. We do working holiday visas. So in Australia, Canada, and New Zealand, we had one year working holiday visas. In New Zealand, we extended it to two years. We mainly picked up uh, bar and restaurant work. You can also do volunteering, which is a really good way of stretching your money. So you get free accommodation, free food. They don't pay you, but you've got to do something like five to six hours a day. One of their money-saving strategies is to buy a camper van to avoid expensive accommodation and to spend less money eating out. The money they make from selling the camper van at the end of the trip is usually enough for them to break even, which means they often spend next to nothing on accommodation. If you go to any third world countries, like a lot of Southeast Asian countries, India, Nepal, it, it's very cheap, it's, it's not worth getting a camper van out there, but then when you get to Western countries, it's very, very expensive. The biggest expense in Western countries is accommodation. They've bought and sold four camper vans so far, and have plans to buy a fifth for an upcoming road trip from Alaska all the way down to Florida. Our first one was the Mighty Falcon in Australia. We had Beatrice Beauville, which is sort of a, what, 12-seater bus, I think. Uh, next camper is we had Shaky, Shaky in New Zealand. She used to be a kid's kindergarten school bus, so it had all monkeys and things painted on the sides. And then our final camper van is the one we've just recently made uh, and sold. It was Pablo, Pablo the camper van for Europe. Pablo. She was a very, very small van, probably one of our smallest ones we've done. Yeah. Traveling in a camper van isn't always easy, and Lauren and Craig have had their fair share of unpleasant experiences on the road. Sometimes when you stay around towns and cities, you have to stay in kind of dark, secluded areas like car parks, because it's not really legal in a lot of places. So you've got to be quite discreet about where you stay. You have some interesting night sleep. Yeah, we've had someone threaten to slash our tires while we're inside our car in Australia. Um, we had some nasty experiences with hillbillies in Canada where they um, blocked us into our little campsite and we couldn't get out and they were drunk. We had mice that lived in the car. I used to be really put off by mice in the first year in Australia, but now actually I don't really mind them. Even though it can be tough, the couples found that traveling in a camper van offers advantages that go way beyond balancing their budget. You can stay anywhere from a lakeside in, into a forest, you can stay in city centers, you can stay by the beach, you know, anywhere anywhere you want your balcony to be, you can make it happen. It is just a home on wheels and you can take it anywhere. You just get to appreciate staying in the woods on your own or with your travelling companion, looking up at the stars, toasting some marshmallows over a fire. It's very cheap. We average probably about $10 each a day when we camp a van and the same when we're in third world countries like India and Nepal. But it depends how many uh, activities you want to do and how frequently. We do all the, the big activities, snorkeling, scuba diving, bungee jumping, kayaking, horse riding. But we save a lot of money from not going out on the piss every night drinking. We don't regret not settling down. I mean, we do have this long distance dream of owning a couple of acres of farmland with a beautiful little like Swiss log cabin in there. Yeah. And that will be our retirement plan. We can already see how exhausted we get on hikes. The idea of doing that when we're 50 or 60 when we're retired just seems absolutely impossible. If I'm struggling now at 26, 
So I think, yeah, now's definitely the best time to travel. Yeah, yeah. And settle down when we're older. Thank you.